So just having scryed the Aether of Tor, and I'm seeing just a lot of recapitulation of previous um, visions, and just leading now to a sense of whirling above me, coming down now to a bright uh, gemstone. This one isn't clear so much as it is luminous, and it has with it uh, from it emanating spindles from a torus, creating a nice gentle flow. And these spindles are more like in a torus formation, spindle fibers, spindle wires, whatever. Um, just looking very beautiful. And it's like this is a beating heart of the universe. And now I'm seeing these, I'm seeing three of them in particular, no longer in the torus formation so much as it appears like maybe a four dimensional so that these spindles come in three directions. And this, I'm told, is like unto the Trinity. Again, none of these, these, these analogies are not perfect. They don't perfectly align with, you know, theology that we have to this point. But it's very bright and it's very glowy. And I'm looking deeper into this. I'm seeing, I'm sort of inspecting the apparent circles or spheres from whatever point of view I'm looking at. But these are, um, there are sort of these black circles. I'll, I'll, I'll describe it from a 3D perspective. There are these black circles in these filled circles within, offset by maybe, we'll say 20% of the radius of the larger spindle. And I'm being told that, so just drawing in some of the Jebbafal um, symbolism, what I'm seeing is that uh, the, the black sphere that um, I have seen before in those visions, uh, this is sort of like contained within a larger, you know, white sphere. Um, and that there continues to be this interplay between, you know, what we might consider the a white cube, which is basically the human attempt to Okay, so how did I, how do I describe this to do it justice? Okay, so if we think about the nature of evil and our attempts to rectify ourselves to our human heart, which is actually this very clear inner clear sphere, right? That's what that's this is representing in the three D world, right? Our clear empty heart. So given the corruption of nature, as it were. Um, just the imperfection, what, what Buddhists would call dukkha, the, 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 the first noble truth, the inevitability of suffering. That would be like this, this black outer sphere. And so we create, we work to, we work within that paradigm, as it were, uh, by creating good structures, an eightfold noble path, etc., to transcend suffering, Right. It's, it's embedded within this world of dissatisfaction, dissatisfactoriness. So that's what dukkha is. The world is just full of stuff like that, that it's dissatisfactory. And so we have to work to improve it, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, sort of like the Mahayana path. But it turns out that about that, so that would be, so we could have clear sphere, white cube about it, circumscribed or circumscribed about it, and circumscribed about that cube is a black sphere. But really, I'm being shown this from that there are three sort of, of these spheres, as it were, perhaps one of mind, one of body, and one, or one you know, body, spirit, and soul. So perhaps we could think of each of these having their own level of dissatisfactoriness, right? 
Um, perhaps our souls all wish to be united as one. Perhaps our bodies tend to decay and whatever. And our spirits are um, basically faced with circumstances and of not being, not recognizing ourselves, as it were, as uh, embedded within God, even though we are. So if we think about this, um, you know, from the perspective of a, of a larger working, it's like God is working through these things. So hence we have this four dimensional ish Taurus, right? I don't have the, there's probably a better term for this. Maybe it, maybe it would be more like a toroid if it's in four dimension. I'm not sure. But regardless, there's this constant um, cycling, a sense of cycling that I'm getting. And that, the God, that God's clear heart, which is this luminous gem, is sort of the thing that all of these spheres are cycling back in on um, through this process. So... This is all very beautiful and this is like a big, this is a big thing, right? I mean, this is like, what this is saying is um, our, how do I put this? As far as death goes, you know, our bodies are recycled and then come back out again into somebody else's body or a plant's body or whatever the case may be. Um, as far as uh, souls go, you know, there's this whole concept of reincarnation, right? Or, um, or if it, maybe that would be more of a spirit thing. So our spirit could come out, spit out again in a form of reincarnation. And then finally, we have this idea of soul, which is somewhere between the two, but there's a lot of this emotionality and how we kind of go from one state. We could go consider ourselves to go from you know, happy to sad to this or that. Um, there's some connection to the body. There's some connection to spirit. But really, you know, the, we, there's, the, but again, there's this cycling through of, you know, our souls sort of, what are we attaching our minds to in any given moment? So at any rate, here I'm probably not articulate enough to get into everything, but there's this cycling through, right? And so within it, at the center, you know, there's always this moment, such as I'll try to take advantage of right now, where we can, you know, rest our minds within this clear light. We can always pause, set our bodies to, to a very still mode, and allow our body to relax into this very still place where the clear mind is. And we can allow our souls to no longer have these vagaries and the, this fluctuating emotion. Instead, just land on peace. And our spirit in that moment can completely feel itself at one with God and re remember its unity with God, ultimately. So, note that we've come a long way. So, But the Taurus has been a continual theme. And... It's, we've gone from this state where this inner part of the Taurus is kind of jagged and perhaps feeling like it's ripping apart part of ourselves to suddenly now we're at a point where, you know, through this soft heart, we can recognize, okay, we have a place to come back to and settle in on, right? This place of love and of peace and of um, okayness, right? So I'm asking if there's anything else, because this is very beautiful. And uh, my holy guardian angel sort of comes forward. He's trying to point to something kind of way at the edge of this vision. And it's like... So within this, it's as if he's pointing me to this fixed star that is f very far away from this... Um, vision and what he's saying is is that this fixed star of apparent distance is nonetheless something that if we were to approach it and leave where we are to this fixed star it's actually just bringing in a larger a more unique uh, energy signature and increasing the richness of this uh, ongoing process and adding in the new things that 
you know, the divine wishes uh, and desires to be incorporated because that for the divine, the center is everywhere. And so when we grow like that, the divine grows and is giving others the opportunity to grow. And I believe this is the end of the vision.